Well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on what part of the country you are calling in from. I'd like to welcome you to the Finance of America Mortgage Wholesale VA Home Loan, How to Get Your Purchase Offer Accepted. My name is Ginger Bell, and I will be leading you through our webinar today. As you're getting logged in, I want to go through a couple of housekeeping issues. First of all, you should be able to see my screen. And I do have handouts for you. I'm going to show you how to get that in a second. Um, you can listen either on your computer or by dialing in. Either way is fine. And if you do have questions as we go through the webinar today, there's a couple of different ways you can ask questions. You can type in the chat box or you can click on the Q&A and type your question there. We do have a lot of information that we're covering today. So I'm going to be answering only very general questions. And any questions that you do have, you can contact your Finance of America uh, account executive and they can answer any additional questions that you may have. So let's go ahead and do a quick sound check. Make sure you all can hear me and let me know what part of the country you're ca calling in from. And uh, Greg already knows. I want to know how the weather is. It's uh, been a weather week for me. I was in California last week attending Todd Duncan's Sales Mastery and the weather wasn't too bad in San Diego. Um, but it rained like crazy over the weekend and had a thunder and lightning storm. And then Sunday, I flew into Denver to 23-degree weather and uh, ice. So um, I am happy to be back in Oregon for today. And the weather's beautiful here. In fact, probably some of the nicest in the country. Beautiful leaves, uh, 70 degrees. Um, but I'm going to Vegas tomorrow to attend the AIM conference and look forward to seeing all of you who will be there as well. Let me know if you're going to be there. Um, would love to be able to see you um, while we're there. We have some exciting things going on. So if you're there, by all means, let us know. So looks like you can hear me, which is awesome because um, I don't want to be just talking to myself. But we do have a lot of information to cover. I have the slide deck, and I also have a VA presentation for realtors there for you. And then I have a, a VA flyer. So you can click on any of the links that are in your chat box there and download them onto your computer. Um, I will also be sending a follow-up email and that will come to you tomorrow, sometime during the day. And then I also put all of our content, including the recording of this webinar, into our FAMU, so you can access it there as well. We have another VA webinar coming up this month that I'm excited about, actually working on that content this morning, and that's talking about VA Jumbo. So that is going to be on October 25th. You can register for all of our Finance of America wholesale uh, webinars and events at www.famuevents.com. So my name is Ginger Bell. I'm an education specialist with GoToTraining, and I work with Finance of America to help them to bring education, training, um, specifics on products, uh, different programs to you. And so I will be going through the information today. And we're talking about VA home loan, and we've been focusing on that um, the past couple months because it is such a great opportunity for our veterans and for those who have served. And there were over 740,000 home loans that were guaranteed by the VA in 2017. And that's very exciting because it makes it the largest year in the history of the VA program. But when you look at a comparison, there's actually over 22 million veterans in the U.S., but yet only 1.65 active um, veteran loans, so 1.65 million active veteran loans. And so whether you've been closing VA deals for 20 years or you're just getting started in the industry, you cannot afford to miss this opportunity to learn more about the VA home loans. And that's why we have been focusing on that as our mission is to ensure that every veteran across America who is eligible for their VA loan can have access to the full scope of what the VA offers them as a home loan benefit. So why is the VA benefit so underused? And a lot of it has to do with perception. The perception has been that the VA transaction is not for the faint of heart. Many real estate professionals um, with the proper tools and training can use this important loan program to be able to build their business for the long term. And that's what we're focused on right now, especially in this changing market, is to be able to really find those opportunities. 
it's important to know how to help agents and sellers maneuver through the VA transaction as well as help buyers pursue the VA home loan opportunities. And to look at those skills is so important in today's market and they're really critical to properly serving our veteran community. So why is the perception as it is? And the notion that the VA loan takes longer to close than other mortgage products has become a popular one. Many real estate agents are often told that a buyer using a VA loan will be harder to get closed or it takes longer. And the truth is you can close a VA loan in the same time frame as an FHA or a conforming loan. Often sellers hear misinformation. They think that the VA home loan is going to be a lot harder. Much of this comes from realtors and the stories of the past aren't true anymore. We need to let sellers and realtors know that as long as they are getting the same net or better from a VA buyer as what they would go in, going through a conventional buyer, why not take it? And that's really what it begins with is that perception. It starts with making the offer attractive. So we know there's a lot of negative perceptions about VA purchases. And the offer you present is your opportunity to tackle those head on in a simple yet thoroughly professional way. And so you begin by asking the listing agents um, what they think when they get a VA contract. Um, what you build creates a picture. Your offer should be written so it's easy for the seller to address how much am I going to make after paying fees, how accurate are the fee estimates, meaning how accurate is their net, when is the deal going to close, should I accept this offer compared to another offer, should I counter on any particular elements of the offer, is there anything that might come back to haunt me if I accept this offer. There is this perception, as we know, that the deals come um, with surprises on VA that won't be triggered until well into the deal. Sometimes people think there's extra cost to the sellers via VA non-allowed fees, appraisal repairs, termite repairs, or any other kind of a boogeyman that's out there. Your full efforts in drafting the contract and working with your borrowers needs to be focused on addressing that concern and then answering any objections before they even come up. We all know one bad experience can create a lifetime of distrust with your realtors. So the number one rule to consider when writing the offer is the KISS principle. Keep it super simple. Make it easy for the listing agent to present your offer and enable the seller to compare it to other non-VA offers in as much as possible um, an apples to apples kind of a way. So how do you do that? And let's look at those tips. The first thing is include a personal cover letter with your purchase offer. The second, include an approval with your offer. The third is provide proof of reserves assets, down payment funds, that can help to strengthen your offer. The fourth is increase your deposit. And the fifth is be flexible. You don't always have to ask for seller credits to cover closing costs. And we're gonna go into detail on each of these. And we'll start with including a personal cover letter. So a very good idea in this competitive housing market is to include a personal cover letter with the offer that introduces your family and explains why they are the right candidate to purchase the home. Sometimes it's good to include a picture too. So if you can tug at those heartstrings of the seller, and I've seen this happen time and time again, that if they feel really attached to that particular seller, uh, the buyer, the seller does, then they may be more inclined to choose that offer over other offers. There are sellers who would love to help a military family or a veteran obtain home ownership. So writing that personal letter counts. The other thing when you're writing um, the letter is to remember that sellers are human. The details of the offer will probably get the most attention, but little elements that can only come with a personal letter make the difference when two offers are very close. 
And don't forget to always have your buyers write those personal letters explaining why they want to purchase that house. Make it specific to that house, not just a general letter. Talk about the neighborhood, why it's important. They're going to schools. Um, you know, maybe getting into when they walked in, they just had that feeling that they were home. You never know what is happening with the seller that day, and a personal letter might make a huge difference. The next thing is include an approval with your offer. Now, we know you cannot include the actual DADU underwriting approval with your offer, but you can include in your approval letter that they are approved for a VA loan. There's one thing that makes jumpy sellers even more nervous, an offer without a pre-approval letter. So having that is important. Make sure that your buyers are pre-approved and always include a VA loan approval letter with your purchase offers. Finance of America has a very exciting program, which is called our Rock Solid Offer. And what that does is it gives your uh, you the ability to be able to go in and have your borrower approved without having the actual home. So it's the um, verified income, verified assets on a TBD, to be determined property. And so by doing this, then they see that you have a full lender approval. And as we know, mortgage brokers have historically been seen as having a disadvantage against direct lenders in their ability to offer their borrowers and their referral partners full credit approvals. You do not have to worry about that with Finance of America with our rock solid offer. So what we're providing for mortgage brokers and non-delegated correspondents as well, the underwriting option to offer buyers the ability to make that rock solid offer without having identified a proper property. This increases their chance of getting the offer accepted into contract. So you can contact your Finance of America account executive for me more details on the rock solid offer. So next let's move on to providing proof of reserves, assets, down payments, and this can strengthen your offer. So if you can provide the proof of reserves or assets in the down payment funds, it can help to strengthen your offer. The zero down payment requirement with the VA means that they have less skin in the game, and sometimes that's what sellers are nervous about. So we can't argue with this because VA does allow 100% financing, but this does um, provide for an opportunity to be able to get into a house with zero down, but it doesn't mean that they are not fully qualified or don't have additional assets. So it's a good idea to include maybe some proof of reserves and assets and any applicable down payment funds along with the offer. This shows the seller that the buyer has the funds to close if any additional funds are needed to close the transaction. So just gives them the opportunity to really look at your borrower and the whole picture that they have. Assets can make a big difference. So we know with the VA, it's 100% down, but your sellers don't know if the VA buyer is a millionaire going into zero down because they can, or if they're a young farm family that really does have limited means. So unfortunately, when in doubt, human nature normally assumes the worst. And this perception leads to the other major concern of listing agents and sellers. That is, if anything does come up, will it be balanced into a renegotiation or a one-way negotiation? For example, what if the appraisal comes in $1,000 low? What's going to happen? Will the buyer say, I don't have a dime? So either lower the purchase price by 1000 or I have to cancel the contract. By showing that there's additional, additional assets, it can make them, them more comfortable in accepting that um, offer. And so just a tip from the trenches, show funds. And especially if they're there, it can help to strengthen your offer. Next, you may want to consider increasing your deposit. So if you want to show a seller how serious your borrower's offer is, you may ask them to consider putting down a bigger deposit in earnest money. 
Now, this may seem risky for some, but earnest money is there for a reason. If your borrower is uncertain about putting a noticeable amount of earnest money on the table, it may be a sign to the seller that they are uncertain about the house itself. So assuming the borrower holds up their end of the bargain and all the right contingencies are in place, it won't cost them any more in the long run since the deposit goes towards down payment. So a VA buyer typically qualifies for zero down financing, which means they'll get their deposit back at closing. So again, this is the opportunity for you to come in and be that consultant. And if they have a house that they really want, or maybe they've been losing, and I know we've gone through that a lot where veterans are losing deals because, um, because they are a veteran, by allowing them to increase their deposit or asking them if they can or consulting them through that, that can help them to be able to win their deals. The next is communicate with the seller's agent. So work with your agent. It's a good idea to have your agent work with the seller's agent up front and find out are the sellers veterans. That can make a very big difference because veterans want to what? They want to sell to other veterans. So find out, hey, are the sellers veterans? And then be able to communicate through uh, if they're making a purchase offer, um, maybe they'll pay for the closing costs and, and be able to, to communicate that through the entire process. Next, communicate with your borrower. Are you open to paying a higher interest rate? So sometimes people assume just because uh, a buyer uh, has funds for closing, they forget to ask the seller um, whether or not they're going to be able to cover them. And this is one of those things, to be able to communicate to find out, are they open to paying a higher interest rate? So sometimes to make buyers more competitive, um, the lender can pay for all the buyer's closing costs with a lender credit. And you can talk to your Finance of America account executive to find out how this works, but it can be a good negotiating tactic so the buyer and seller can strike a deal. And so you want to make sure that you are working with your Finance of America account executive and finding out how you can do this. Um, there may be some times when you are asking for a zero seller credit. And so if you have a very competitive area that you're in, maybe sellers are, are not willing to take a, a VA loan because of the seller credit, then what you may want to do is to write an offer with no seller credit. And so the net to the seller is the same as the purchase price. The math is very simple, and oftentimes it's how your offer is compared to other offers, and it makes it more straightforward. What it may mean is the buyer's interest rate is a little higher. So it's something you'll want to ensure that they've been um, pre-coordinated. Obviously that they are approved for that. And um, make sure it's obviously tied um, to what they're comfortable with. So the lender credit is directly tied to the loan amount. And since it's part of the loan price pricing, it's not unlimited. And the higher interest rate does provide some additional credit. Um, but there's a point, obviously, where the max out, um, and they'll max out regardless of the interest rate. So that's why you want to work with your Finance of America account executive to walk through that and see what that looks like. So let's talk about some tips for writing up the contract. And this is our disclaimer. This is just information that we have found that are, that are tips that we've seen work. Um, we're not real estate attorneys. Um, we're not form experts. We're not risk mitigation specialists. But we certainly have been through a lot of VA deals. And so making sure that the contract is written up correctly can help to make sure there aren't those hiccups that come along and again that goes back to what we talked about at the beginning was the perception so if you want a transaction to go along smoothly you want to make sure everything is set up correctly at the very beginning so the first thing is 
make sure that the names match. Make sure they match it, your um, COE. Make it the way that they want everything to be. That How it is set up at the beginning is how it's going to be through the entire transaction. So looking at that certificate of eligibility, how is that name? Making sure that's consistent all the way through on your loan estimate, all the way through your application, all the way through your documents. Those are the little things that can be hiccups at the very end. So if they're set up correctly, you're not gonna have any issues with that as you go throughout the process. The next thing is, if they're recently married or they're going to be getting married, use the name that'll be on their legal ID just prior to closing. That's their driver's license. So again, making sure everything matches up can help to make sure that you have a very smooth transaction. Don't include the spouse if he or she is not on the loan, even if they're going on title. So if they're not going to be on the loan, you want to make sure that they're not anywhere in that contract. They're obviously not on the application. You want to make sure it's very clean in everything that you're doing. So let's talk about the initial deposit. And this is an area that um, it can be whatever you want it to be. And some buyers think when they're making that initial deposit that the check is never cashed. You want to make sure that they know this is the first thing that escrow will do. So again, talking to your buyers, letting them know this is what's going to happen through the transaction. We all know that bouncing a check is not the way to start out a deal. So make sure that you're talking to your borrowers and letting them know that that initial deposit will be cashed. Where these funds come from is also a huge deal. So you want to make sure that the check isn't from a friend. It's not from the agent. It's not a cash advance on a credit card. Um, make sure it's not from an account with negative history. So you want to make sure when you're setting this up at the beginning that those funds are coming from a source that you're going to be able to easily trace and will be something that makes sense and will strengthen your deal. So let's talk about a seller credit and how you request a seller credit if you're doing that. So the seller credit can be um, a certain amount. And so when you're asking for a seller credit, you want to name a limit. Otherwise, it's a blank check. And the seller might pick a number that doesn't work. And oftentimes, throwing out the first number can actually be a good thing. And sometimes when they're getting into negotiation, they're like, they don't really want to do that because maybe they'll get more. But you want to make sure to throw out the first number. Also include recurring and non-recurring closing costs. So that's everything. That, the, that way the buyer can use up every dime of it. Include your VA non-allowable fees and mention them so the listing side knows they've been taken care of. One thing that you can include is debt. It's often a little used mechanism and it doesn't mean that you have to use it, but put it in there as a just in case. Again, the perception is things come up and so it slows the transaction down, but if you're setting this up in the very beginning, to make sure that it's covered, then you're gonna have less hiccups along the way. So the debt payoff is normally reserved for paying off mandatory debts like a judgment or a tax lien, but it can also be used to pay off other debts like credit cards and installment loans. So there are advantages to being able to include that if you think you're going to need it. One little note, you wanna make sure you do not advertise paying off debt as a tool for B for your VA buyers. So again, it gets into consulting with them and finding out where they're at and working with them, going through that rock solid offer because then you're gonna have a better idea when you go into it as well. So how much of a seller credit should you ask for? So there are many lenders out there who use a standard practice and often encourage realtors to request a 4% seller credit on every VA deal. And 
you probably attended certain seminars where they teach this at, as the, at their real estate agent VA seminars. So when you look at this though, if you look at what is 4% of a $100,000 purchase, is that enough money? What about 4% of a $500,000 purchase? Is that too much money? What happens when you have too much or too little? So if you have our $100,000 with a $4,000 in credit, the total costs come in in $6,000 and the buyer only has $1,000 to their name. Guess what? That's a dead deal unless someone takes a $1,000 hit to the commission and who's that going to be? Not going to happen, right? You look at the other example with a $500,000 credit, um, $500,000 loan, we've got $20,000 in credit. So that total cost comes in at $12,000. So the buyer is overpaying by $8,000 and probably not too happy about it. So get specific about what it is that you're asking for. <clears throat> there are times that the buyer has plenty of money and only the VA non-allowed fees need to be dealt with. In this case, um, you want to calculate how much those non-allowed fees are and if there's enough natural built into the lender credit to already cover them. There are also times when the buyer does not have enough funds to cover all the closing costs, whether they're VA allowed or VA non-allowed closing costs. In that case, the lender needs to ensure the agent knows how much seller credit to request at a minimum for the deal to qualify and get done. And that's what you want to focus on. So um, just some tips. You may not um, put this minimum amount on your pre-approval letter say it, because it may undermine your negotiating strategy if you're asking for more. But as soon as you know that number, make sure and ask for it. Um, make sure that through the negotiations, you're helping your buyer to be able to, to make, keep that deal going and make sure that it is completely executable. So next thing, let's talk about the um, mandatory escape clause. And you want to make sure to explain this to your borrowers, what it means. Um, but oftentimes it needs to be explained to the sellers because they see it and they don't know what it is. Um, the term VA escape clause sounds like it grants this like superpower to the VA buyer to bail out of the contract for just about any reason with no negative repercussions. What the seller um, wants to accept is um, from a buyer um, as a solid offer. And so when they look at this as an escape, then they're less likely to feel comfortable with it. And so you want to make sure that they understand what it is. And basically, in essence, it is, and it states in here exactly what this is. So this is the term you need to use. It's expressly agreed that notwithstanding any other provisions of this contract, the purchaser shall not incur any penalty by forfeiture of earnest money or otherwise be obligated to complete the purchase of the property described herein if the contract purchase price or cost exceeds the reasonable value of the property established by the Department of Veterans Affairs. So the escape clause is needed because VA will not guarantee loan amounts that exceeds the appraised value of the home plus any allowable add-ons to the loan amount. So in cases where the appraisal value is lower than the asking price, the borrower would be required to be paying the difference if he or she wanted to proceed with the home loan anyway. Um, but there are those who can't or won't pay that difference out of pocket. And so the escape cause is required to prevent the borrower but from being forced into a loan that they can't afford or they don't want. So it's protection for the veteran. But it doesn't mean that if the value comes in lower that they can't get the home. So what buyers and sellers need to understand is um, that the VA requires it in any sales contract, um, but they have the right to renegotiate many of the terms, including their seller's concessions, asking prices, and so sellers are also free to delist the property or refuse to sell based on anything else. Um, and it's important um, to understand that the, 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 the buyer can come in and they can pay that difference. So the VA loan escape clause is required by law. It cannot be omitted or redefined, but if that 
does come in lower, then your veterans can actually pay the difference. So again, it's explaining to them what it is and making sure they understand what it is, what the sellers understand what it is, and um, that it doesn't mean that if the value comes in lower, it's a dead deal. So it must be signed by both parties and it's usually at the time of the sales contract. So again, just letting your buyers, letting your know, sellers, letting your agents know that this is out there. So what happens um, if the appraisal comes in low? So the VA amendment to the contract says the buyer can get their deposit back or they can make up the difference in cash. What it doesn't say is the buyer can use this to renegotiate the terms of the deal. Um, it doesn't say that, but that option, although unmentioned, is one of the most that happens. So it gives you an opportunity to say, hey, if the appraisal comes in, then lower, then we're going to look at that. And, and it's like any other transaction that you go through. It's the same kind of thing. It's just they have this as a protection. So when that comes up, you want to make sure to let them know that they do have that option. And it's a safety net for them. And that's why often sellers are a little um, unseated by it. But it's, again, a matter of explaining what that goes through. And if you've done it a good letter and you show they're pre-approved, then your sellers should feel comfortable with them. So when you're looking at putting together your uh, VA offers, these are the tips that you want to follow to get your offer accepted by the seller. The first thing is include a personal cover letter with your purchase offer. Include your approval and use FAM's rock solid offer to make sure that you are getting those approvals done. The third is provide any proof of reserves, assets, down payments, and that can help to strengthen your offer. The fourth is consider increasing your deposit. And the fifth is be flexible. Um, you don't always have to ask the seller for credits to cover closing costs. You know, our market's changing a little bit. It's not as competitive as it has been, um, but you may be in a market that is a little more competitive. So you want to look at the entire picture and guide your borrower through the process. So what's the win for doing all of this? Well, first of all, it gives you happy buyers because the transaction has been explained, you've covered your basis, your sellers feel comfortable, you're communicating the process with your agents, with the seller's agents, with your borrowers, everybody's all on the same page. And we all know happy buyers equal what? Referrals, and especially within the veteran community. Once you close a VA deal, then you can tap into their friends, their family, their coworkers, and you want to make sure to do that. The military community is one of the tightest knit groups going, and they know after doing multiple moves that the yellow pages and online reviews are not necessarily the way they want to go in finding someone that they want to do business with. They'll go to a friend and they know that a friend saying that they should absolutely positively use you is a rock solid advice that they're going to latch onto and they're going to follow. So building that um, perception, building that following, building a base of being a veteran um, home loan specialist is very important in today's market. The first thing that you always want to do, and I recommend this to everyone, when you sit down with your um, borrowers, and hopefully you're doing this all the time, is the first question you ask is, have you served? And then obviously your next, if they have, is thank you for your service. So many times we forget to ask, and I've talked to a lot of originators that didn't even realize that somebody was a veteran because they forgot to ask. So make sure this is the very first thing that you're asking, have you served? The next thing is become an expert. You know, in this competitive market, and especially as we're moving into a purchase market, being able to get the business from realtors in your area is about being the expert being able to provide help for them, resources for them, helping them to be able to get their deals done, um, being able to provide training and information um, to realtors, to companies in your area. You know, 
being a VA home loan specialist, you can contact companies and ask them if you can come in and do a lunch and learn for their employees to talk about the VA home loan. You can get your foot in the door with companies starting with this and then build from there. Maybe you can do a session on FHA or USDA or first-time home buyers. Um, but the VA is a great way to be able to get into companies in your area because oftentimes, especially for HR, they're interested in helping out their veterans. Look at community groups within your organization. Who is involved with veterans? And especially if you're in an area where there are a lot of veterans, it's a good thing to be involved with. There's a lot of organizations out there, whether you're working with the Wounded Warriors, with your Folds of Honor, um, with your um, Homes for Veterans. There's so many things that are out there that you can get involved with. Look at that. And then look at building partnerships. So whether it's with a real estate agent, with a financial planner, um, with someone um, that is doing remodeling in an area, there's a lot of opportunities to be able to build partnerships. And so positioning yourself as an expert is so important. And when you're doing that, look at the ways that you can stand out. You know, if you're not doing a blog, you should consider doing a blog, writing articles, finding ways that you can be included. It's so important to be able to do that and to leverage that. Um, doing webinars like this, you know, you can hold a webinar for your real estate agents and tell them about the VA home loan. Talk about how you make um, transactions easier. Talk about the things you do to be able to help your borrowers through understanding the process. You can um, do webinars to help agents be able to explain the VA home loan to sellers and what that looks like. So look at ways that you can stand out and then also relate to them. So we talked about this in our last webinar and uh, I think it merits talking about again and that is becoming a certified military housing specialist. And um, it is an organization that's called USA Cares. It's a small donation that you make in order to be able to get the certification. And once you have the certification and the entire course is done online, um, there's not a minimum amount. I, actually, there might be $25 that they want for a minimum amount for a donation, um, which is a very small uh, amount to pay for education, in my opinion. Um, but what it gets you is um, a certificate of completion. So you can put that onto um, your um, office, onto, um, you know, I mean, if you have several in your office, have everybody do it. And that way you can show, hey, everybody is um, certified. The other thing it does, and I love this, is it gives you the certification to use in your marketing. And so I would do it just for this alone. And you get in there, you're certified military housing specialist. And you can use this for, you know, any kind of um, webinars you're doing, any marketing you're doing, any flyers that you're doing. Put it onto your cards, put it onto your email signature, because oftentimes it will spark conversation. So those are the things that mean so much. And we know realtors believe in certification, so it's a great opportunity to be able to show them that. And maybe they want to do it too. So you may even say, hey, let's do this together. The other thing is get involved with um, projects. Um, Folds of Honor is a, a uh, opportunity to get involved with uh, an organization that gives scholarships for military spouses and children. Wounded Warrior is another great project. I know a lot of people have gotten involved with that. So if you don't have something in your area, consider starting something. Um, Folds, and, Folds of Honor is an organization I um, recently got involved with, and they don't have a chapter in Oregon. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, I want to start a chapter in Oregon. How do I do that? And so I have a call with them next week. Say, hey, you know, let's let's get it started because it's something that I think is important. And even though this particular organization doesn't have to deal with homeownership, it does have to do with scholarships for millennials. And so we know what the next market we're moving into is millennials. So it's a good area to get into. Create a VA campaign and look at really that. You know, we're coming into the end of the year. It's time to start thinking about, okay, what's my plan for next year? 
if you do not have a plan in place on what you're doing for marketing, I really recommend setting something up. Make a plan on what you're going to focus on for 2019. Wow, that sounds weird to say that. Um, but think about what you're going to do as far as working with your realtors. And so creating those programs. I've created a slide deck. Um, I sent you the link. It's actually up there right now. I'm going to send a follow-up, but it's a uh, uh, slide deck talks about the VA home loan. You can personalize it, but you can set up your own meetings. There's a flyer there as well, but think about what you're doing and all your marketing and include VA in part of it. And then also remember, Finance of America has some incredible loan programs, and the VA is one of those. And being able to work with Finance of America and uh, work with your veterans and get that rock solid offer where you can go in and you can get a loan approval that has verified income, verified assets, gives you that rock solid offer. It's the beginning of what you're doing to get your offer accepted. We have a lot of resources that are available in FAMU. We actually have an entire VA certification program that is available there, and that's free. And we give you a certificate to use. We don't have the um, logo. Um, maybe that's something we'll consider doing. Um, but if you want to find out more about the VA home loan, then educate yourself. Become an expert with it. We provide you with a lot of resources to be able to do that. If you do not have a login to our Finance of America University, you can contact your Finance of America account executive and they can get you set up with that. So I'm not seeing any questions, which I didn't anticipate a lot of questions because we're not going through a lot of programs here. Um, but we will be covering a lot more programs in our upcoming webinar which will be on October 25th. And we're gonna be going through the VA Jumbo, which is another um, great loan program. And we're going to be going through the qualification, the requirements, and um, how to be able to work in this program as well. So I wanna thank all of you for attending. For those of you who will be seeing us in Vegas at the AIM conference, I look forward to seeing all of you. And uh, make sure and get registered for our next webinar that's coming up. And I wish you all a great weekend. So thanks so much, guys. And we will talk to you all soon.